Brain Food, random stimulation for the brain. So a little while ago, I showed you how to make one of these awesome full-size Captain America shields using a satellite dish as a mold. The trouble was some of my American pals had trouble finding satellite dishes and needed a cheaper build. So I went back to the drawing board and built this slightly smaller Mark II version with a nicer spun metal look. It's still tough as hell and I certainly wouldn't class it as a toy. In fact, it's exactly the same design as seen in my other video where you can see me testing this to destruction in slowly increasing levels of abuse. So get comfortable, grab some popcorn, I'm going to show you how to make one of these yourself. It all starts with one of these flexi flyer sleds which are relatively cheap and easy to get hold of in the States and as you can see it has a nice overall shape and viewed from the top it has that heroic shield shape that we all want. The first stage is to mark the centre and for accuracy take your time and mark the multiple angles. If you have everything right your last mark should intersect all previous lines drawn on the face of the shield. Next we're going to drill a small hole right in the centre of the shield with a 2mm bit or thereabouts. Now we can cut away those rope handles, we won't be needing those where we're going. The sticker comes off next, if it doesn't peel off fully use some WD-40 or some hot soapy water and that will soon take care of that. In my Mark 1 shield build I showed you how to make an oversized compass like this which is just two sticks with a hinge and a nail shonked into one end and a hole drilled into the other to hold a marker pen held in place with a wood screw as a clamp. So if we plonk the compass nail in the centre hole which is just slightly smaller than the width of our nail it's just a matter of marking a careful line just above the old handle holes. And these holes are a bonus as it turns out because that means we can get a metal cutting jigsaw blade in to cut away the metal that we don't need. So grab your jigsaw but if it has a pendulum action make sure it's set to no more than a low setting. It doesn't take Stephen Hawking to figure out it's metal cutting time. Just remember to take your time, we want the shield to be round. Oh and wear some safety glasses. When that's done, it's going to leave you with some pretty tasty sharp edges. And I don't know about you, but I like my fingers and thumbs. So it's worth taking a little while just to knock off those edges with a file. Now, because I want to make more than one shield, I'm going to need to look after this mold. So I'm using some nail varnish that I found lying around, and this will stop the edges going rusty and the paint flaking off later on when it's not in use. The last stage of making the mould is to grab some scrap 3x2 timber like this, then screw or nail it together so it forms a nice square shape, nothing fancy. Finally grab some duct tape and fold it back over and onto itself, and hey presto we've invented double sided duct tape, well done us. Now whack it onto the frame. And when you've done all four sides, stick the mould face first into the frame. Now you have a nice firm base and there's no silly flex or wobble. Next take a large drill bit and a couple of turns will remove any burrs on the inside of the mould. A quick last minute wipe with some meths or white spirit, make the mould ready for the next stage applying the PVA release agent. But before we do, now is a good time to measure the inside of your shield mould for the fiberglass chop strand mat that we'll be cutting in a moment. Just make sure that you allow about half an inch excess either side of the mould, we can always cut the spare off later. With those measurements safely squirrelled away, we can add the PVA release agent to the mould. And if you don't know what that is or you get confused by any of the steps here, you can always check out my Mark 1 Shield build available in the iCars, the description bar and at the end of the video. I've also discovered that this mould definitely only requires one coat of release agent for it to successfully separate later on. While we leave that to harden off, let's go and cut some CSM. Using the compass again, this time loaded with a dark pencil, mark out your CSM shields to the size that you measured earlier. To make the shield I used in my Captain America Destruction video, I used 4 layers of 450 gram CSM, but if you're on a budget, you could even cut this down to 3 or maybe even 2 layers if you wanted to. With that done, cut out with some sharp scissors and you're golden. Next, wet out your mould with some polyester resin. You can find links to this on the website with the amounts I've used, but if you have any problems, it's basically the same stuff as Bondo fiberglass resin, as used for repairing cars, boats, and bathtubs. One tip I will give you is don't work in direct sunlight like I am here. This dark colour of the mould absorbs the heat from the sun and it makes your fiberglass go off too fast. Now I've made a lot of shields now and I have a knack, but if this is your first shield, find some shade and a cool day if you can. 
When you have a nice even coating about one millimeters thick on the inside of your mold, chuck the CSM circle right into the center. And what we have to do now is apply more resin to the top of the CSM until it goes soft and forms a dome shape of the mold. Don't be tempted to faff around, get the resin on, get it in. For a shield of this size, the first layer will use about 600 to 800 milliliters of resin and about 600 milliliters of resin for every layer that you add afterwards. When you have most of the big creases out and it's started to go transparent, wrap a small consolidating roller and roll the remaining air bubbles out. You should now see any spare resin coming out to the surface and we can use this again in the next layer. Now, this was actually my very first Mark II build and like a doofus, I cut the CSM too large. So using some sharp scissors, I trimmed off the excess and cleaned up the scissors later with a little bit of acetone. With that done, I'm going to plonk another layer on top. And because this is a four layer design, this will be the last layer before I add some bolts for the handles. Now, there's no mystery here. The CSM gets the exact same treatment as we did for the last one. And while we let this cure and harden for 30 minutes, let's look at some fixing bolts for the handles. These cheap roofing bolts are what I used in the Mark II build to keep the cost down. But if you want something a little bit nicer, check out my first video. Next, I'm going to grind the dome off the top of these so they're nice and flat. I'm using a flat disc sander, but a metal file will also work. Just remember to be gentle with the threads. That's the screw threads, not your clothes. Now the shield's nice and dry, offer your arm in for the fitting position of your handles as seen in the Mark 1 build. Now we plop some car filler on the flat head we've just created and fix it into an upright position. Four studs later, we should have something like this. So let's let it dry until the filler's gone hard and we can add some small bits of masking tape to the threads. This just helps protect them while we add the last layers of fiberglass. Position your last layers of CSM in place as before, but this time gently poke the bolts through the CSM so that they're fully exposed. With that done, mark the shield and the CSM with a pencil so you know the exact position it goes in later. Now remove the CSM, put it to one side and mix another 600 milliliters or so of resin. This time, the only change is that I'm using a two inch brush to consolidate any last air bubbles or stray strands that are hanging around the fixing bolts that we've just added. After a nice cup of tea and a biscuit, it should have hardened off enough to spin the mold over. And now's a good time to refresh that hole in the middle of the shield with the same drill that we used earlier. Now it's time for the big reveal. So turn the mold back over and we can prise the shield away from the mold. Just be as gentle as you can and take your time. If you bend or crease the steel mold at this stage, you can't use it again for more shields at a later date. There you go, not bad at all. At this stage some mild soapy water will clean your mould up for reuse later and clean the shield for the marking and cutting in a moment. Next grab the compass again and mark a line that's free from imperfections. Now I had two stabs at this because I noticed some nasty little pinholes in my first outer line. Mistakes happen. Using the same jigsaw and settings as before, cut the jagged outer edge off. Look out for splinters, work outside, wear a mask and make sure the wind is blowing away from you. That way, none of the fiberglass dust will irritate you later. With the basics done, you have your new shield. So let's sand it up for painting. First, we're going to round off the edges on the inside and out. And a nice job here will look slick later, so take your time. A power orbital sander will also be quicker than hand sanding alone. Now we turn our attention to the inside and a flat disc sander will save you an awful lot of time if you've got one. For a perfect finish, take your time. You can even fill it with car filler and sand it again if you want to. Just remember to protect yourself from dust in the same way as we did when we cut the fiberglass with the jigsaw. The last bit of prep is to sand the face with some 400 to 600 grade wet and dry. A nice light sand will do. Don't go in so deep that you might uncover minute pinholes that you will only have to fill again later. Now you're free to clean and spray with a good quality grey car primer ready for adding the silver coat and decoration. And I'm not going to tell you how to do that because I already have a video available on that. And you can find the links in the description bar, but I will show you what I've changed in the Mark II. And that starts after you get the silver paint on the shield and it's cured and hardened for a minimum of 24 hours. Here I've screwed an aluminium plate that clamps a two inch nail 
dead center in the middle of this wooden cake turntable. And I'm going to plonk the shield on so that the nail pokes out through the center of this hole. All that's needed now is some nice steady DJing skills combined with 240 grade grip paper. Just keep spinning it slowly, moving the grip paper outwards towards the edge. If you haven't got a cake table, you could just use some string connected to a nail in the center hole and then the grip paper on the other side and following it around in circles. But the method I'm showing you here proved to be a lot quicker. Just be careful not to sand through and into the primer underneath. When that's complete, clean off any dust with some mild soapy water and allow it to dry whilst we get ready for the last stage. This is a little bit of black acrylic paint. And what we're going to do is mix it with some water and a two inch brush. Make sure it's nice and watery, but still black. Finally, blast it all over the face as quickly as you can until the whole face is covered. Again, this helps if the sun is not out. Now rag off all the black acrylic wash that you've just added with a clean dry cloth and it should wipe off the silver paint fairly easily, but get stuck in the sanded grooves, making it a lot more visible. The very last step is to use some lightly soapy water and some 800 to 1000 grade wet and dry. This should clean up the silver coat ready to receive the coloured circles, whilst leaving the black colour in the grooves that will give you a spun metal look effect that looks really good. Finally, the spun metal effect that you can see in the aluminium star on the face of the shield was created once again by using the rotating cake stand to scratch a pattern into it with 240 grade grit paper. Now just add your finishing details and handles as seen in my other video. Well, that's it. That's how to make the Mark II shield. If you have any questions, don't forget to check the Mark I build that covers everything in detail. I'll also tell you exactly how much resin and matting you need on the website in the links provided, along with the dimensions for the star decoration, the circle dimensions, and how to reduce build costs to the bare minimum. Don't forget to like, share, or subscribe. Thanks for watching.